issue. So last few uh, modules, we saw how chemical agriculture came to be and what its disadvantages are. Now let's get into fundamentals of uh, farming, fundamentals of agriculture, not just chemical or organic, just the fundamentals. So typically you would grow uh, vegetables or whatever crop you want to grow, you grow it on soil. So soil is the most fundamental thing when it comes to farming. There are people who are growing it without soil also, aquaponics, hydroponics, etc. I don't know how scalable it is, at least in a country like India. So soil is the most fundamental thing when it comes to agriculture. So uh, what is soil? What is it composed of? The soil typically uh, is composed of minerals which come from uh, weathered rock. The base material could be any rock and that will decide uh, what color your soil is going to be. And uh, the other major part is organic content, decomposed leaves etc. And there are uh, microbes and <coughs> small uh, organisms like earthworms etc, millipedes etc. And this is what uh, soil is composed of. When, when you pick up a handful of soil from your farm, you can roll it around in your hand. So and it won't, typically it shouldn't cause any friction unless it's, it has too many rocks. It shouldn't uh, scar your fingers or anything. So why, why can you do this with your uh, hands? Why can you roll around the soil in your hands? So if you take, uh, let's say, gravel, which you use for construction or gardening, so you can't uh, roll it around in your hands like uh, you can do with soil. Because uh, soil is not just one particle, it's composed of particles of various sizes. The largest will be gravel, then next comes sand, then next comes clay and silt and your organic matter. And what these uh, smaller size particles do is, they will uh, reduce friction, they make this uh, rolling around possible. So that's one of the important characteristics of soil and that's why you can't maybe <laughs> Even now you can't synthesize soil in a factory <laughs> because it's not just one thing, it's very complex thing. So typically when you go to a farm, what do you see? Uh, what do you observe? It could be a farm which you are going to buy or it could be a farm which uh, land which you already own. The first thing you see is the color of the soil. So basically you can uh, tell that there are just two colors. There's the red soil and there's black soil. If you go to Deccan Plateau, you will see huge stretches of this black cotton soil. So typically, how how would this black cotton soil form? So when volcanoes erupt and uh, the, this igneous rock which forms, right? When the lava cools down and forms these layers of rock. So for a few decades, it would it would start weather due to wind, uh, sun, basically heating up. It heats up and cools up, and, it, and something which is not malleable, which is not plasticky, uh, heats up and uh, cools down. Cracks start forming on the soil. Start form, uh, start forming on it. So in this cra crack, some pioneer species like grasses, which have very tiny seeds. So these seeds come and uh, start depositing in the cracks. They germinate and they have very strong uh, roots which uh, crack this uh, layer even more. And these grasses start dying, they decompose. And a small layer of soil forms. And even during decomposition, uh, when uh, this organic matter decomposes due to microbial activity, a lot of oils and uh, acids Al uh, alkalis, these get released, which weather the rock even more. And in a few centuries, a small layer of soil starts forming. It's just a few inches deep. If you go to any farm, uh, you dig up with a JCB. The top soil would be maybe a few inches. In very rare cases, it will be a, maybe one or two feet. It's where all your uh, agriculture is dependent on. So uh, this is how black soil forms. So one of the ma uh, major character characteristics of black soil is it has a lot of clay. It holds, when it rains, it holds a lot of water. 
when you typically go to this uh, black cotton soil area and you put your leg in after it rains it's so uh, clay there's so much clay in that that i don't think uh, you will be able to pull out your slipper <laughs> your footwear will just remain there it's so sticky that's one of the major uh, characteristics of black cotton soil because when it rains it takes us takes up lot of water it becomes water log and when uh, the sun comes out and it start drying you will see cracks on the soil so but uh, you can't say all black soil is like this it will become water logged or it, it's all clay let's say you have a uh, stream a seasonal stream near your farm and it floods on your farm every season then what happens is a lot of sand gets deposited on your farm and this makes it less clay it makes it well drained all this sand which gets added to the black soil it makes it easily drainable then you can grow orchard crops also on black soil because it's well drained so uh, black soil it has typically it has lot of uh, organic matter that's what uh, gives it the black color and the second major type is uh, red soil where people say you can grow orchard crops like mango etc most of the fruiting trees uh, fruiting orchards it's uh, done on uh, it's grown on uh, red soil because it's drain very well and it has lot of silica which is very good for uh, orchard crops it gives the uh, fruit its crispiness silica because most of the uh, the cell wall of the plants and the fruit itself it's made of silica only so but uh, you can't say all black soil is uh, very well draining there may be exceptional cases like with black soil so what is uh, red soil made from it's made from weathering of crystalline rocks like quartz etc when it starts weathering similar to black soil it starts weathering and organic content uh, starts getting added to the rock and slowly uh, the top the top soil develops so these are the two two types so somewhere some areas you will get sandy completely sandy soils so somewhere uh, it, when this red soil it get keeps getting water logged it will get converted into sodic soils so what happens is uh, so because of water logging all this uh, beneficial microbes they don't work there nothing grows there and it starts getting yellow it starts turning yellow the, there are sodic soil but the major type is black and uh, red soil so this soil uh, type decide will decide up to a certain extent what you can grow in that and how fertile the soil is your farm is going to be the uh, another important uh, parameter which you can measure is uh, soil temperature so why is soil temperature necessary we are uh, we are all mammals so mammals can regulate their own body temperature we are all warm blooded mammals we can uh, regulate our own body temperature so that all the metabolic activities in our body they keep happening and we grow and we repair ourselves and we can fight out diseases etc but plants don't have this mechanism they for warmth they are dependent either on the sun or the uh, soil so what metabolic process the, does the temperature affect so the most important thing is germination if your farm it has just rained and it's winter even if you put in your crop seeds because of uh, lack of warmth these uh, seeds won't germinate even if they germinate the germination rate is going to be very poor so the most important thing which uh, the soil temperature decides is germination rate the second thing is uh, growth of your plants especially vegetables if it's too cold or too hot they won't grow if it's too cold the metabolism uh, won't occur it's too the vegetative growth it won't it won't happen 
if it's too hot they won't be able to take up uh, nutrients from the soil so they start getting shriveled up so another uh, most important thing which the soil temperature uh, controls and which we can't see with our naked eye is bacterial activity there are like thousands and crores of bacteria in the soil but there are certain types with every 5 degree change in soil temperature one set of bacteria or microbe they get deactivated they go into hibernation or they complete die off and another set takes over and with another 10 degrees increase in uh, temperature these will go into hibernation or die off and another set of fungi or bacteria or microbes they take over and they start decomposing decomposing or they dissolve all these minerals and give it to the soil so when you go to uh, rain fed areas you will see after they have harvested the soil they just leave the soil open there is no uh, mulch live mulch or anything covering the soil and temperature keeps rising in the afternoon what uh, this what does it does is it kills off all the bacteria in the soil and today because of chemical farming and also because of they leave it fallow when you go to rain fed areas where they do chemical farming this uh, farm uh, land the top soil is very compact very hard you will need a tractor you can't you can't do anything with your hand tools or small tractors there because all this happens because of the temperature so how do you measure this temperature like uh, you measure anything you use thermometers and there are special thermometers designed to uh, measure soil temperature nothing special about these thermometers they just have a uh, harder probe which you can push it into the top soil to measure so typically they would cost around maybe 3 to 5000 or will go even till 10000 you'll have to mostly import them as far as i know but you don't want to invest uh, in these uh, hi-fi soil thermometers you can just buy a uh, baking thermometer which has a probe and you can push it into the soil and you can take out a reading so typically take a reading every 2 or 3 hours in a day so that you get a range of soil temperatures how what was the coldest temperature and what was the what was the most highest temperature and then you can uh, start planning your crop so other important why do you need to measure this soil is so lot of a lot of uh, organic farmers they swear by jeevamrita or other liquid kunapa jala etc all these are liquid uh, menus which you start pumping into the they religiously pump these liquid menu liquid fertilizers into the farm without fail every 7 days or fortnight so if it's too cold in the winter which is already effective affecting the vegetative growth of the plants which you are putting and uh, it's too cold and you typically these uh, liquid uh, fertilizers they are given early in the morning or in the evening and when you do this when it's too cold what uh, it uh, injures the roots of the these sensitive plants it causes chilling injuries then your plants will start shriveling up so when you know how cold or hot your soil is you won't uh, do these mistakes so that's why uh, soil temperature is important 